I was leading the, the global summit of the, the main countries in the world um, at Glen Eagles in Scotland. We'd literally just had the news about the Olympic bid and winning the Olympics for London, so there was a general state of, of euphoria. Um, and then I remember having a meeting about the summit with the Chinese president and being passed a note in the course of that meeting saying that there'd been incidents on the, the London Underground and that I should step out of the meeting, and, which I then did and started to take calls. And then as, as the minutes progressed, it became pretty obvious quickly that this was a terrorist attack. And at that time, we didn't know the full extent of it, but as, as the morning went on, it became clear there were, there were multiple casualties. And did you at any moment think in any way that you were partly culpable because of Iraq, because of Afghanistan? Look, at the time, the single most important thing is that you think as to how you can deal with the situation. Right? So this is the, the first thing that you're talking about. Now, later, as, as time goes on, you're able to reflect. I think it's very important to understand that the probable leader of the 7-7 seven, seven, um, attacks was someone who was first in the training camp in the middle of 2001, right? before 9-11, never mind before the invasion of Afghanistan or the invasion of Iraq. And, you know, the, the difficulty is that, that there will always be reasons and excuses that people use for, for terrorism. And you have countries like France today that's the subject of terrorism, or Norway, or Belgium, or Tunisia, or Kuwait, or countries across Africa, none of whom had anything to do with British or American foreign policy, and yet whose citizens come under this type of violent and indiscriminate killing. So, you know, I think in the end, the responsibility has got to lie with the people who carry this out and those who encourage them.